one of the great places in the world to be at the beach, to be able to be connected barefoot to the earth. It's in fact a great reason why people come on vacations, why we're at this great resort here in Hawaii. On this earth, there is a charge, there's a surface charge. It's on the water, it's on all the rivers, it's on the springs. There's that surface charge of negatively charged electricity. This is what's been discovered. So the atmosphere is basically positively charged and the earth is negatively charged. And because I'm barefoot, I'm able to actually be part of the great earth. The earth is so big, it immediately envelopes me as soon as I touch it with my skin. But if I'm insulated with the rubber soled shoe or the plastic soled shoe, if I'm insulated by wooden floors, if I'm insulated by carpets, if I'm insulated by vehicles or airplanes, then I'm separated away from the Earth's electromagnetic field and it changes my own static field. In fact, I'm then isolated as an electromagnetic island and I'm susceptible to the bombardment of EMF frequencies, especially in the low frequency range. So I've been working for years to actually go barefoot. And I have to say, like when you're a child, six, seven years old, and you go barefoot for the whole summer, your, teeth, your feet get tough and you get tough and it's just easy. But as an adult, I'd spent years and I'd get on tough surfaces and it would hurt and I'd be like, I've been going for a couple years here, what's going on? But finally, after about three years, my feet toughened up. They just toughened up and all of a sudden I'm walking on gravel, I'm walking on surfaces and, and it finally happened. So I feel really happy about that. Basically, I'm almost always grounded. That's what I've learned from not only my experiences barefoot, but also from the grounding technology, is that whenever I'm not grounded, I feel it. So I'm almost always grounded. I'm gonna take you through my typical situation so that you can adapt this into your lifestyle and see if there are times and places where you can be grounded as well. One is I go barefoot as much as possible. Two is that even when I'm sleeping or at the computer doing any kind of desk work, I'm always using grounded or earthing technology to pull that electromagnetic field of the earth to me and to come into my body and drive off the aberrant EMF that's around me. And by the way, the earth itself is the best defense we've got against all these aberrant frequencies that are in our atmosphere from cell phones to Wi-Fi to radio frequencies, etc. Not that the earth blocks all that, but the earth blocks the low frequency stuff for sure, including radio waves, and that can be brought into you just by being barefoot. Even when I'm in a car, I have a little device that I drag in my car and that grounds the chassis of my car. You may not be aware of this, but the chassis of your vehicle is actually connected to the negative terminal of your battery. So your car is actually negatively charged. Even if you touch the metal of your car, it's actually better than not touching it because that negative charge will give you a subtle little sharper energy, especially late at night. You'll be able to drive with a little bit more sharpness at night because you got a little bit of a negative charge on you. But again, I've gone a little bit further. I've got a device that drags under my car, just a little it's a electromagnetically conductive rubber, and it's a carbon impregnated rubber that it allows the chassis to bring the electricity from the earth into it. And then I have a thing that I sit on that allows me to be grounded to the earth even while driving. I use grounded mouse pads, I use universal mats, I walk barefoot. If I'm in a city, sometimes I've got to um, wear a five, vibrant five finger shoe and, and that's what I need to do at that time. Sometimes if I'm doing a big event with some big speakers, I'll use a vibrant five finger shoe. And I like using the vibrams because they give your foot a natural articulation. They allow your back and spine to move naturally. It's like what Dr. Rossi said, 60 plus years of research, and he said it's impossible for a shoe wearing human to have a natural gait, a natural walk because the, the shoe doesn't allow your arch to be activated properly, doesn't allow you to use your whole foot. And I did go through about a six month process of re-educating my feet when I really went barefoot, when I really went for it about three years ago and really went for the vi five finger shoe, the five room shoe, when I wasn't barefoot. So sometimes I'll have to use that, but most of the time I'm actually walking around barefoot and it's, it gives you a feeling of connection. It's really source energy. And when I'm in the summertime, deep in the summer, especially in the forests of North America, way out in the middle of nowhere, barefoot walking, there's a sense of ecstasy and bliss that comes out of the earth. It's a feeling, it's definitely there. I've definitely felt it when it's not there and I've definitely felt it when it's there. There is an energy that comes out of the earth that is blocked by shoes and shoe wearing. And if you're a hiker, if you're a runner, if you're a walker, this is something you wanna start thinking about. You wanna start thinking about going barefoot and becoming part of the barefoot revolution and reconnecting to our earth again.
Now you gotta have sense about this. Go slow, step by step, re-educate your foot, strengthen the arch in your foot, strengthen your calves, and you'll get there.